So this is the LG Wing and it's pretty weird. It's a dual screen phone with a swiveling display and upper mid-range specs. It costs a thousand dollars and honestly you should probably think twice before buying one if a thousand bucks is anything other than pocket change to you. But despite the Wing's numerous flaws, and there are plenty that I'll get to soon, I'm actually really glad that this phone exists. I'll get into exactly why in our review of the LG Wing, so take a sec to subscribe and we'll dive right in. So first up, this is an absolute unit of a phone. It might not look it, but at 260 grams, it's heavier than both the Galaxy S20 Ultra and the Asus ROG Phone 3. It's well designed and appealing to look at. In fact, it's the nicest looking LG phone that I've ever reviewed. But the Wing is definitely the kind of phone that you notice in your pocket and your hand. You've got two colors, Aurora Grey, which is kind of a fingerprint magnet, and Illusion Sky, which has a pearlescent matte finish, but is way more slippery in the hand. The front face of the Wing is taken up almost entirely by its primary display, a 6.8 inch Full HD Plus P OLED panel that curves around the sides and features only the slightest chin and forehead area on the verticals. The big downside is that this is a less smooth 60Hz panel which is tough to swallow in a thousand dollar phone, otherwise daylight brightness is acceptable and the colours are pretty great too. Like its close sibling the LG Velvet, the Wing includes in-screen fingerprint in the primary display as your go-to biometric unlock method. And like the Velvet, it's a bit slower than I'd like, but also not horrible. The Wing's bottom firing speaker is also nothing special, producing slightly tinnier output compared to rivals with a dual speaker system. Let's cut to the chase though. The central gimmick here of course is the Wing's unique swivel display. The primary display slides up to reveal this second screen, a squarish 3.9 inch panel with considerably more bezel space in all directions. It's kind of the equivalent of having another half screen of space to play with. We'll get into what you can actually do with that extra space a bit later, but the mechanics of that sliding mechanism are sound. Swiping the wing open feels natural and is easy enough to do with one hand. On the inside, the Snapdragon 765G provides enough power for most things you're likely to do with the Wing, but as we'll get to later, LG's software doesn't feel as responsive across the board as some other 765 series phones we've reviewed. You also get 8 gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of storage, which is a nice upgrade from the Velvet on both counts. Browning off the Wing's spec sheet are some notable nice-to-have extras like IP54 splash resistance and mil-spec compliance, plus Qi wireless charging. 4000 mAh battery too, which may seem a little on the low side for such a big phone, but with only a 60Hz refresh rate I found it to be just fine. A full day's use was never a problem for me, even when taking lots of photos and using 5G data, and of course that secondary display. Fully opened out, the Wing's unique form factor allows you to run up to two full screen apps on the main display and one on the secondary display, in addition to a whole bunch of little windowed apps if that's your thing. So that could give you a smaller social feed down below and a full size video up top, or rotate the device 90 degrees and you could have a small video on the second screen while you scroll through Twitter on the main panel. Or anything in between that, it's mostly left up to you to decide which orientation and combination of apps makes the most sense. If you want to go completely wild, you can hold the phone upside down and use the full size keyboard to type into a document on the secondary display. Anytime you're viewing a video, the optional control panel down here gives you direct control of brightness and volume levels, and when you're using other apps, a swipe down of the second display loads up this tweaked quick settings menu, and from there you can activate more features like the virtual trackpad, which works exactly as you'd expect. There are countless fun possibilities here, including productivity and gaming, and LG has even worked with app partners like Gameloft to bring extra functionality to Asphalt 9 when you're playing on the wing, as you can see here. In that same upside down configuration, LG's keyboard even allows you to swipe outwards for a more ergonomic split keyboard arrangement. That said, this definitely isn't the most comfortable way of holding a phone. Which brings me to the root of many of my bugbears with this device. You need to rely on LG's software, and well, it's just pretty rough. Gboard and other third party keyboard apps don't work well with the dual screen, so you're stuck with LG's keyboard with its lackluster prediction and correction. Using the wing in a T-shaped configuration also forces the main screen to use this Rolodex app tray thing, which is kind of a waste of space, lets you see fewer apps for no good reason, and infuriatingly apps need to be whitelisted to even be able to use the second display. If an app isn't whitelisted it won't show up on the second screen's app drawer, and you'll need to dig deep into the settings menu to manually tag it. The bigger problem is that Android's default task switching system just isn't well suited to this form factor. Juggling apps between the two screens just isn't as effortless as it is with LG's dual screen accessories where a three fingered swipe gesture can easily fling apps around. On the wing you need to rely on manually loading apps or making sure you've got your favourite app combinations saved on the home screen. 
These are all first generation software gripes that probably can be fixed with an update or two, but as it stands the innovation of the LG Wing is undermined by the reality of using Android on this form factor. So what else does the Wing have going on? Well, the biggest upgrade the LG Wing has over the Velvet is its triple camera setup. Around the back, there's a 64 megapixel unit with OIS behind an f1.8 lens. That's flanked by two ultra wide cameras, one for regular photography and a second to use with LG's video gimbal feature. The main shooter goes toe to toe with some of the best Android cameras out there with impressive dynamic range and color clarity, plus minimal noise even in darker conditions. As is typical for many LG cameras, a decent amount of sharpening is applied to photos after the fact, but unlike the Velvet, this doesn't result in any unpleasant visual effects, even when you're zooming in beyond 2x. For everyday use, this is a fantastic smartphone camera. The ultrawide also holds up really well next to the competition, with minimal distortion around the edges of the frame, and competent indoor and lower light performance. Likewise, the 32 megapixel pop-up camera performs adequately across the board, with moderate skin smoothing and an almost 80 degree viewing angle that's just about enough to fit in an extra person if you like. If you open out the LG Wing when the camera app is open, you'll enter gimbal mode. This isn't a true mechanical gimbal, but a software gimbal built on that second ultra-wide camera. The idea is that you can comfortably hold the camera in your hand and pan around using the controls on the secondary display. For the most part, it works pretty well. With a reasonable amount of light, you'll get incredibly smooth video, but therein lies the problem. In less than ideal lighting conditions, video shot in this mode quickly becomes very grainy. And even then, you're limited to either HD or Full HD resolution, so super stabilized 4K is out of the question. Like much of the LG Wing overall, the software gimbal seems like a good idea that hasn't yet matured into a complete thought. It's fun to play with, but far from a killer app. So the reality overall for the LG Wing is this quirky science experiment mostly fails to make the transition to being a compelling overall smartphone. For $1,000, the Wing is missing table stakes features like a faster refresh rate and telephoto zoom. Meanwhile, LG's software, while inoffensive enough, struggles to keep up with the multitasking demands of a dual screen handset. For me, the dual screen functionality doesn't bring enough to the table to justify the high price tag, and when it comes to standard single screen use, rivals like the OnePlus Nord and Galaxy S20 FE offer much more phone for much less money. So while the Wing in its current form may be a bit of a non-starter, I'm still glad LG is pursuing this Explorer project. If anything, the slider phone it teased at the end of the Wing's launch event seems like it'll make for a much more compelling product. The target audience for the Wing may be for the most part pretty small, still I'm enthusiastic for the future of the LG Explorer program, and I am looking forward to seeing what's next. That's it for now, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss our Pixel 5 and OnePlus 8T coverage coming soon. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.